What's going on guys, Briar Rabbit here. Today we're going to be upgrading, well, really cosmetically upgrading, a Hipbox Leverless Arcade Stick. Uh, I'm really excited for this. I got some really cool artwork. I got some really cool buttons. Uh, and we're just gonna jump right into this. So first of all, I'm gonna talk about the tools I'm using. First of all, a small Phillips head screwdriver. Uh, this is just mainly to open the box up. Uh, we've got a little plastic prying tool. Uh, if you have something like this, it is really handy to get these little buttons off. If you don't have something like that, that's okay. A uh, small flathead screwdriver would probably work as well. Uh, a pen also to get these little buttons off. And finally, a button removable removal tool. <laughs> uh, this is from Paradox Arcade. Uh, there's a couple companies that make these, but this makes the job a lot easier. Uh, we'll be putting in these new Quamba buttons here. These are the Quamba Gravity KS buttons. Let's see if you can see those. Okay, these are pretty cool looking buttons. They're very customizable. They have a lot of internals that you can remove uh, to change the feeling of the button. Out of the box, they're pretty quiet compared to something like a Sanwa button. And uh, they also feel real nice. So I'm looking forward to checking these out inside of the hitbox. We're gonna get ahead and just start doing this. So first thing we're gonna do is open the thing up. I have already removed two of the screws in the back just for time's sake. Uh, but there's just six screws, small Phillips head screws that you gotta undo. Uh, since there is foam all over the back, be careful when you're screwing these back in that you don't catch the foam here in the screw head. Uh, but just remove these six screws. Uh, and the cover will just come right off. Your wiring may look a little different from mine just because I've already uh, done quite a bit of work inside this box. But basically what you're gonna see is a lot of brown wires and uh, some other colored wires. So you can see some red, some blue, some white, uh, and some black wires in here. Mainly we've got, it's a little confusing. All the brown wires are ground wires, so you don't have to be too concerned with that. But when you're taking these off, uh, you definitely wanna take a picture. So let's go ahead and take a picture of this so that we know where all our wires go. Mostly, it'll be relatively self-evident because of the length of the wire. But you know, like this red wire and this red wire are awfully close together. Uh, so that could be confusing. As far as the brown wire, as long as it reaches the button you're trying to get to, you don't have to worry about it too much. But if you're unsure about this, label each bundle as to where each button is. Uh, that'll make your life easier in the long run. At least take a picture so you can refer back to the picture if you get confused. So first thing we're gonna do is just start dismantling this thing. Uh, and we'll do that by pulling these wires off of the buttons. It's pretty easy to do. These wires are easy to get off of these buttons. You just pull straight off the back of the button. Uh, try not to torque on the wire. Try and grab the, the connector itself uh, so that you don't rip the wire off of the connector. You don't wanna be having to go back in and re-solder connectors and all that. And we're just gonna remove all of these. You know, you can try and kind of keep the wires where you found them, but as you move this thing around, they're just gonna get all mixed up. It's kind of inevitable. Uh, I've been playing with this hip box now for, I'm gonna guess about two weeks. And uh, it's certainly taking a while to learn kind of the ins and outs of hip box. It's been pretty fun and rewarding so far, but there are certain things that I'm definitely having trouble with. One of them being, is this the right size? This is the wrong size. One of them being uh, dragon punches. I can do fireballs real easy, but dragon punches still seem to trip me up a little bit. This one's kind of stuck in there. What's the matter, buddy? You don't want to get out? It's unusual that the removal tool won't help me get that out. Stick a pen in here and see. Oh, well, it went out. 
<laughs> went right across the room. Uh, looks like we're gonna have to get these guys out before we can get those top ones off. Uh, most of the buttons on this stick are Sanwa's from the factory, but these ones on the edge don't seem to be. They seem to be more generic buttons. Uh, which, to be honest, it's not really a problem in my eyes because, you know, they're really just use, gonna be used for like start and select and the share buttons and all that kind of stuff. Uh, all the buttons that you actually use to play the game are Sanwa buttons. All right, finally we'll get, oh, there goes my tool. Get that last one out. All right, just move these off to the side for now. And now we can remove the front panel. Uh, to do that, we're gonna take a pen, uh, just the blunt end of the pen and each one of these little buttons on the bottom of the button there's like a little kind of post that comes through and it's gonna be hard to pick up on the camera but what i'm gonna do is just put the pen into the post and push until i hear a small snapping sound and i'm gonna do that for each one of them i'm just gonna go right around the fight stick and push that until i hear that little snapping sound I think I already did this one. Yes. Double check. Do it again. All right. We'll put the stick back on its bottom. And then I'm going to take either, if you got like a small plastic prying tool, that'd be best just so you don't scratch anything. If you got a very small Phillips head, or not Phillips head, flathead screwdriver, what you can do is just kind of pop it under here. And you can just kind of pull up. That's gonna let you just pull these things right out. They kind of remind me of trim panel um, connectors or fasteners that you'd see in a car. Uh, they operate in a similar way. Uh, and you wanna be careful with these things because I could not find these on Hitbox's website to get replacements. Hopefully you can't hear that helicopter going by. So if you wanted, you know, if you broke one or you lost one, or the cat got away with it. Uh, I honestly don't know where you'd get more. If anybody knows where you could get these guys, I'd love to know because uh, I wouldn't mind getting some spares or some different colors because uh, my artwork is no longer going to be white. All right, this should be our last one. Of course, it's gonna be the most stubborn. We'll go at it lefty and by dexterous. All right. I've been just using this kind of cover here to throw all my hardware into, just so it doesn't roll off the desk. All right, now we can just remove the cover. Now, the hit box does not have a uh, piece of paper on here. Uh, this, this art is just, I don't know if it's painted or if it's glued onto the uh, original Plexi. So when you want to change your art, not only do you have to get your art, but you also have to get a spare clear piece of Plexi from Hitbox themselves. So just be aware of that when you order this stuff. Uh, it wasn't that expensive, but you know, you got to get it shipped and all that too. All right. So here is my new art. I got this art from Focus Attack. Uh, and actually, What's cool about the art is that this was made by, I believe the artist's name is Johnny Fraze. Uh, and he put a bunch of Street Fighter VI character art up on Reddit uh, for anybody to use on their new fight sticks for Street Fighter VI. And uh, they ha he has a bunch of characters up there. I'm gonna put a link in the description to uh, the art, uh, Focus Attack for where I got it printed. I'll put you know, for the Quamba buttons, for everything, I'll put links in the description, but definitely check out all his art. It's very cool and he allows you to download it and print it for free. I sent it over to Focus Attack uh, and they printed it out for me. And I gotta tell you, this quality of this print is really nice. The resolution is really good. It's kind of got this like matte finish. The paper is really nice. 
Uh, it really looks good. Now, obviously, because he just kind of did this art for any generic fight stick, uh, there are a couple of issues with using it on this hitbox. You can see that where the Street Fighter 6 logo is, the 6 on the bottom is kind of cut off here. Uh, Ryu's head is kind of cut off here. It's because, you know, Johnny didn't, he didn't design it for a hitbox. So I just sent him the file. I sent Focus Attack the file and they kind of lined it all up, cut the holes, everything. Uh, and the holes, you don't have to go in and cut these holes with an X-Acto knife. They're pre-cut uh, and they just pop out. And then you can use the inserts on buttons if you want to use them on buttons as well. Uh, here is our Plexi. This is uh, has to be ordered from Hitbox uh, because the uh, Plexi that the fight stick comes with obviously uh, cannot be seen through. So you have to get a new clear one. But as you can see, I mean, it, it really changes the whole tone of the fight stick. So next thing we're gonna do is put these little plugs back in. Uh, and the easiest way I've found to do that is now that they're open from taking them out, we're gonna leave them open. I'm gonna use something to just align the holes so I don't rip the artwork. I'm gonna gently put it in and then I'm gonna use, again, uh, this flat tool to, what I'm doing here, is I'm putting the tool in kind of between right here so that I can push down on the bottom but not on the top. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna insert the rivet into the fight stick. And then once it's inserted, then I push down on the top of it and it closes the top so it then secures it. So we'll do, go ahead and do that all around. So I'm just gonna line up the hole. And again, just go from the bottom, just pop it down. Uh, sometimes if they're hard to put in, just go in and just kind of pry this thing back apart gently so you don't break it. And then you can just pop it in there and pop it down. Let's try and do one from the top here. So this out of the way and kind of try and show you what I'm doing here. Inserting the whole thing in and I'm using the pry tool to just push the bottom part in and then I'm pushing in with my thumb to secure it. It's very easy. Uh, it's a little fiddly until you kind of figure out a technique for it. Uh, but once you get going, pretty easy to do. If you have trouble getting it in, just make sure that the thing is kind of separated as much as you can get it. Uh, but again, be careful with these things. You really don't want to break them. Uh, at least until we figure out where to get new ones. I'm sure there's a place to get new ones. Uh, you know, just don't know where that is. I don't really know what they're called. Plastic pop rivets is the best I could come up with, but I really don't know what they're called. And I wish that uh, Hitbox would just put these on their website in kind of a multi-pack, and it'd be nice if they had different colors as well. Um, maybe if I had contacted their support, they'd be able to point me in the right direction. All right, last one goes in right up here. All right, and that's all done. We can start putting in buttons. And uh, I'm gonna go with kind of a similar theme to what was already there. I wanted to match the art as much as I could. So I went with uh, red here for the action buttons or for the movement buttons. And then these kind of white clear ones for the uh, action buttons. And then I thought a blue one here, kind of to match the blue that's on the artwork and also kind of like a fireball. Yeah, I just thought it'd look cool. Uh, but I've learned that it is best to start with these ones at the top because they are the most fiddly to get to. So let's pop those guys in. And there's no functional need to 
to replace these buttons at the top. Again, you know, this is like start options, the, you know, PlayStation kind of center pad, share, that kind of stuff. Uh, so, you know, not super functional buttons, but I thought aesthetically it'd be cool to put some blue buttons up there. Uh, we'll go ahead and start replacing the rest of the buttons. We'll go with the big blue one here. And go with our clears. Uh, I decided not to put the artwork inside the button. I kind of like the way they look uh, without the artwork in it, but you can put artwork inside these buttons, I believe. Uh, these buttons are really cool too. They are much, much quieter than the Sanwa. So here's a Sanwa and here's the gravity. And you know, that's a big difference. We'll put it up to the microphone. Gravity, Sanwa. Gravity, Sanwa. Big difference. Uh, so if you got people in the house who maybe aren't thrilled with hearing the tapping of Sanwas all night while you play fighting games, or if you like to play maybe in the living room while uh, other people are, might be enjoying some other activities in there. Uh, I know that my wife uh, appreciates when I have quieter buttons. Uh, I just got a Quamba Drone 2 in that I'll be reviewing soon. Uh, and that thing is spectacularly loud. All right, so the buttons are now installed. Uh, that is going to be the final look of it, but we still gotta make this thing work. We gotta flip it over and attach all our wiring. So let's do that real quick. And again, this is why we took a picture. Let me bring that picture up. And we're just going to look at how it was wired originally, and we're just gonna duplicate that. Uh, so, also, you know, the lengths of the cables also help to indicate where they go. And obviously the cables are somewhat trained as to kind of where they were. So it's, it's not that difficult to get these put back in. Uh, and you know, when you, when you're all done before you put the butt bottom on, before you screw it all back together, I'm kind of looking at this at a weird angle, so it's hard to line these wires up. Uh, you may want to just plug it into your PlayStation and make sure all the buttons function before you uh, screw it all back together. Let's see, and the next one is black and brown. Uh, you, you do want to make sure that these don't touch each other because if they if they do touch each other, it'll act like the button is depressed. And this one is red and brown. Let's see here. This one is, let's zoom in, blue and brown. can't plug in with my left hand apparently. Didn't know. That's news to me. <laughs> and the one above it is white and brown. The brown is just the grounds. Also, it doesn't really super matter uh, which side you put the plugs on. Doesn't matter if you put the white on this side or this side. Uh, Cause you, all you're doing is just connecting the two wires every time you press the button. Uh, so it doesn't really matter. Let's see, this one is, I kinda can't see this one. The one above it is red. It looks like it's black, okay. Yeah, I've been having fun with this controller. There are some significant advantages, like uh, some things, are much easier to do much more reliably like uh, certain supers uh, very quick and very uh, consistent however some things so I believe it goes up here I'll wait to do that one until these ones are done uh, some things like uh, dragon punches I find 
uh, to be a little more difficult. That it's funny. There's a bunch of different ways to do dragon punches, uh, but that almost causes me to like mentally lock up uh, because I have to decide like what's the most efficient way to do a dragon punch on the hitbox. Um, and then by the time I make that decision, it's too late, really. So I don't do the dragon punch <laughs> and get jumped in on, uh, which is just a matter of practice, right? It's not really a downside. I've been playing with an arcade stick since I was a little kid. So of course, this one seems just a little too short to get up there. So I'm gonna go with this one. Thinking that maybe it's a better fit. There we go. And what do we got? This one, this one, another little shorty brown one. This might be it right here. Again, the, the brown wires, just ground, doesn't matter that much. But the uh, colored colored wires, they do matter. You definitely want to get those plugged into the correct button. Uh, let's see here, we got this guy and this guy. And the brown and the black go on the last one here. Red and black go up top. Or red and brown, sorry. And you're not gonna hurt anything if you plug these in wrong and you test it on your PlayStation and you know a couple of the buttons are swapped. Just unplug it from your PlayStation, swap the swap the button wires, and try it again. No big deal. Let's see here. This one seems to be a little shorter. So I'm going to, it's also kind of in with all these guys. Let's get it unwrapped. And we need a black wire to go up here. And it's a little tangled, so I'm going to untangle it a little bit here. Whoops. All right, this one is white and brown. We're almost done here. And we are done. That is a fully customized hip box. Uh, we'll plug it in, test it out, and then we can screw it all in together. All right, guys, now that we've tested it out, let's pop the top on here and we'll get our screws. We're just gonna be kind of careful screwing this back together. This is foam here and we don't wanna mess up our foam by kind of getting it stuck between the screw and the metal. So I'm gonna go in just slightly with the screws. And just kind of get them started. And then we'll go back around and tighten them all back up. This is a very easy upgrade as far as arcade sticks are concerned. Um, with the uh, you know, with the knowledge of you do have to get clear 
plexi. You know, the plexi that's included with the hitbox already has printing on it. And I've been impressed with the build quality of the hitbox as well. It's very sturdy. It's got a nice heft to it. I like that the foam is kind of all over the back. It seems to stay put, although you're not, you're not yanking on it like you are with an arcade stick. So it doesn't seem like it, you know, has the tendency to move around on a desk or in your lap as much as an arcade stick. Uh, because you're just pushing, you know, directly down on it. You're not like, you know, wrestling with it. All right, and we're all set. We now have a fully functional, fully customized hitbox that looks awesome. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Let me know if you know what these little uh, plastic pop rivets are and where you can get different colors because I've been looking around and I can't really find them. Uh, have an awesome day. I'll see you guys next time. Hit that like button if you like the video. Hit subscribe if you're new to the channel. Talk to you later. Bye.